Hello, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Seals. I'm back for our next science lab of the school year. We are still talking about physical properties, which hopefully you remember physical properties are things that we can measure, observe, and describe about matter or any object. And so far we've talked about physical state, which is when I made the GAC and then we discussed whether it was a solid liquid or gas based on its characteristics. And then last week we were talking about relative density, which if you remember means whether or not something will sink or float in water. This week and next week we're going to be talking about another property called solubility. And solubility has to do with whether or not something is able to dissolve in water. Next week, we're going to get really more into um, which things dissolve in water and which things do not. Before we do that, this week, we're going to be talking and kind of reviewing mixtures and solutions. Um, you did learn about mixtures and solutions in fourth grade, but this is a great review for you and we'll go a little bit more in depth. Okay, so your target says I can demonstrate that some mixtures maintain physical properties of their ingredients. So what that means is that in order for something to be considered a mixture, the ingredients keep their properties. They don't change, all right? So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. All right, mixtures and solutions. There's your target again. I can demonstrate that some mixtures maintain physical properties of their ingredients, all right? And then I have two pictures. One of these is showing a mixture. One of these is showing a solution. I would like for you to take a second and think about if you can remember which one of these is a mixture, which one of these is a solution. Let's start with mixtures. It says, what is a mixture? A mixture has two or more ingredients that are combined together the ingredients can be easily separated. So what that means is you could use your hands or a simple tool. You don't need to use heat. You don't have to have anything evaporate, okay? And when the ingredients are separated, they look the same as they did before they were combined. That means that they keep their physical properties. None of the ingredients change size or shape or color, all right? they stay the same, they're just combined with something else. Here are some examples of mixtures. A bowl of different colored M&Ms is a mixture. Okay, we have two or more ingredients, they're combined together, and I can easily separate them. If I don't like the blue M&Ms, I can easily pick them out. Or if I want to give my little brother all the red M&Ms, I can easily pick those out, right? And the M&Ms keep their properties. They don't get smaller or bigger when I combine them together. They don't change color. They don't change shape. They keep their properties. Um, Chex mix or trail mix is a mixture. Rocks and sand is a mixture. Salad is a mixture and oil and water is a mixture. You might be thinking that oil and water are both liquids, Miss Seals. Yes, mixtures can be made up of solids, liquids, or gases. And if you think back to last week when we um, did the experiment, the uh, density column experiment, we learned that oil is less dense than water. Oil does not dissolve or break down in water. It sits on top of the water. Okay, so all of these things are examples of mixtures. We have two or more ingredients. They're combined together. They can be easily separated. And the ingredients do not change properties. They keep their physical properties. They look the same. They're the same size, shape, color, all of that. 
how can we separate mixtures? So I've been telling you that mixtures can be easily separated. So now let's talk about how we can separate them. When deciding how to separate a mixture, you need to consider how the ingredients are different from each other. In other words, which property is different about the two ingredients? This will tell you which tool to use. Here are some tools we can use. So when it's time for you to figure out which tool can easily separate a mixture, you're not just gonna start grabbing tools and trying things out and making a mess. You need to be thinking, how are the, those ingredients in that mixture different from each other? Which properties are different? And that's gonna help you figure out which tool will be the best to use. Here's one tool that can be used to separate a mixture. It looks like this. We're talking about this white part in the middle. This is called a paper filter. You might, might have he heard it called a coffee filter because that's what it's mostly used for is for making coffee. All right, and a paper filter is used to separate solids from liquids. So what happens is if you have a mixture that's made up of a solid and a liquid, the solid gets caught in the paper filter and then the liquid runs through. Okay, so then at the end, you'll have the liquid down here in the cup or bowl or whatever's underneath it, and you'll have the solid in the filter, all right? <clears throat> Could this tool be used to separate a mixture with two solids? No, because if we had two solids, they would both get caught in the filter and nothing would be able to go through it. And remember, our goal is to separate the mixture, okay? So this is used to separate a solid from a liquid. Another tool we could use is a magnet. And this is used to separate magnetic objects from non-magnetic objects. So could I use a magnet to separate a mixture of rocks and sand? No, that wouldn't work, right? Because neither rocks or sand are magnetic. So nothing would stick to the magnet. It wouldn't pull anything out with it. So we'd have to have a mixture where one is, ingredient is magnetic and the other ingredient is non-magnetic. Another tool that can be used looks like this. That's kind of a funny picture because it's on top of a bowl. The ones that we use in the science lab look like this. I took this up close picture because I wanted you to be able to see those little holes in it, okay? This is called a sifter. And this is used to separate larger objects from smaller objects. So if you had a mixture where the difference is their size and one of the objects is small enough to go through these holes, and the other object is not, then this is the tool you would use. This goes on top of a bowl. You pour the mixture in there. The larger object is gonna stay on top. The smaller object is going to go through those, those holes. And we'll look at that more in just a minute, okay? Another tool that can be used is tweezers or your hands. And this is called manual separation. Manual means having to do with your hands. So this can be used to separate objects that have differences in color, maybe size, and maybe texture. So think back to the bowl of M&Ms, right? The bowl that was all the different colors of M&Ms. None of my other tools would work to separate that, okay? Because all the M&Ms are the same size, all the M&Ms are solid, none of the M&Ms are magnetic. So the tweezers or my hands are what I would use if I wanted to separate and take out maybe the yellow M&Ms or the green M&Ms, okay? And then this could be used for size if you have a mixture where one of the ingredients cannot go through this tool. If one of the ingredients can go through this tool, it's small enough, then this tool would be much faster, right? But if you have a mixture where the objects are all different shapes and sizes, but none of them are small enough to go through, then you would use the tweezers or your hands, all right? 
So those are the four tools that we're looking at, the paper filter, the sifter, the magnet, and the tweezers or hands. So we're gonna practice separating mixtures in just a minute so I can show you what I mean by thinking about how the properties of the ingredients are different. But right now we're gonna move on and talk and review solutions. So a solution is a special type of mixture where there are also two or more ingredients that are combined together. But a solution cannot be easily separated. Sometimes solutions are impossible to separate. They'll never be separated. Other times they can be separated, but it might require heat, it might require evaporation, and even after that, the ingredients are not going to look the same as they did before. They're gonna lose some of their properties, okay? So that's what I put here. One or more of the ingredients does not keep its physical properties, and one or more ingredients dissolves into the other. Let's talk about that word dissolves. What does dissolve mean? Dissolve means to break down into very, very small pieces and mix in completely and evenly with the other substance. Okay, and I put a picture of Kool-Aid here to remind you and kind of help you make that connection. Kool-Aid is an example of a solution. There is an even distribution, meaning if I take a spoon and scoop some out, I'm not going to get just Kool-Aid mix or just water. I'm going to get an even distribution of both because the Kool-Aid mix has dissolved and spread out completely and evenly in the water. Does not, dissolve does not mean disappear, okay? The Kool-Aid mix did not disappear. It's still there. I can tell it's still there because the water is now red. I can tell it's still there because I can smell it. I can tell it's still there because when I take a sip, I can taste it. It has not disappeared. It has dissolved. Make sure you understand dissolve is not disappearing. It's changing. It doesn't look the same as it did before, but it's not disappearing. Okay, and dissolve does not mean melt. In order to melt something, you have to add heat to it. When you're making Kool-Aid, you're not adding heat. In fact, you're supposed to use cold water to make Kool-Aid, okay? So melting and dissolving are not the same thing. You need to make sure you understand that dissolving is breaking down into small pieces and mixing in completely and evenly into the water, all right? So think about, I want you, when you think about dissolving, I want you to think about when you make Kool-Aid. You have your water, you have your Kool-Aid mix, you pour it in, you stir it up, and after a couple seconds of stirring, your water is completely changed. It has completely changed color because that Kool-Aid mix has dissolved and spread out. All right, here are some examples of solutions. Some of these are things you may not even realize are solutions. There's our Kool-Aid again. Shampoo, shampoo is a solution. If you read the back of the shampoo bottle, it tells you all the ingredients that are in our shampoo, okay? Those things have completely and evenly mixed together. Some of them have dissolved. There would be no way to separate out all those ingredients that go into the solution, that go into the shampoo because it's a solution. Okay, and those ingredients lose their physical properties. They don't look the same anymore. Salt in water, salt water is a solution. Types of metals, this is a type of metal called steel, which is actually a solution that's made up of several different kinds of metals. So this is a solution that's actually made from solids. Solids, um, metal are, Metals are solids. So what they do is they get them really, really, really hot to melt them down into liquids, and then they melt them together and combine them. And then when they harden, they are used to make things like pipes. Um, oh goodness, 
lots of the legs of the chairs are steel, lots of things that are metal that we use every day are made of steel, which is a solution. Um, soda or any sort of carbonated beverage with those bubbles is actually a solution that's made from a liquid and a gas. Those bubbles are a gas that has been dissolved into a liquid. That's how the, that's what the bubbles are, or that gas. And a cake or really anything that you bake. Think about if you've ever helped your mom or dad make a cake or um, cookies or cupcakes. You take your eggs, you take your flour, you take your sugar, you take your oil, you take whatever else, you combine it together, the sugar dissolves, the egg changes, all of these things are combining, they're losing their properties. They don't look or feel the same anymore and they're combined together. There would be no way to separate them back out. If I said, oh my goodness, I think I added one too many eggs to my cake, there's no way I can go back from this and separate out the eggs, right? Because they have completely combined and dissolved and mixed in together. All right, so we are going to practice. I'm gonna show you six pictures. And then you are going to decide if this is showing a mixture or a solution. So remember, ask yourself, do I have two or more ingredients? Are the ingredients combined together? Could I easily separate those ingredients using my hands or a simple tool? Do the ingredients keep their physical properties? Do they look the same as they did before they were combined with the other ingredients, okay? Or maybe did something, did one of the ingredients dissolve into something else? Those are all questions you should ask yourself. So the first one is a basket of vegetables. I have broccoli, I have corn, I have carrots, I have squash, I have tomatoes. Looks like an eggplant back there. Okay, so I definitely have more than two ingredients. They're definitely combined together. I don't really like corn, so I could take that out and give it to a friend just by using my hands. This broccoli still looks and feels like broccoli. It hasn't changed properties. This carrot still looks like a carrot. So nothing has changed, nothing has dissolved. So do we think this is a mixture or a solution? What do you think? If you said mixture, you are exactly right. A basket of vegetables is a mixture. Good job. Let's look at our next one. Ooh, yummy. This is gonna make me hungry. A milkshake. Mm. A milkshake. Think about if you've ever made a milkshake before. You take your ice cream, you take your milk, you take your ice, you take maybe if you want to add strawberries or bananas. Those ingredients are combined together. Hmm. But do they look the same? Have those ingredients kept their properties? What do you think? Mixture or a solution? A milkshake is a solution. Yep, if you said solution, you are exactly right. I cannot separate back out the ice cream from the milk from the ice. They have lost their physical properties and completely mixed in together. If I take a sip of it, I'm not gonna get a sip of just ice cream or just milk or just ice because they have completely and evenly distributed among each other. All right, our next one is, ooh, this is a good one. Food coloring in water. So think about if you have ever colored Easter eggs, if you have just made colored water. We added food coloring to the GAC last week. What do you think? Can these things be easily separated? Do they keep their physical properties? 
food coloring in water is a solution. The food coloring dissolves in the water. I could not separate these things back out. If I heated this up to evaporate the water, the food coloring would evaporate with the water. It would not be left behind. It completely dissolves and mixes in with the water. Good. All right, three more. Ooh, a box of toys. Let's see, have those objects kept their physical properties? Does that soccer ball still look like a soccer ball? Could I take, <clears throat> could I take out that, <coughs> excuse me, could I take out that teddy bear if I don't want the teddy bear? <clears throat> I could, right? So a box of toys is a mixture. Good job. All right, two more. Ooh. A bowl of candy. I see Reese's, I see Whoppers, I see Snickers, I see Almond Joy, I see Twix. So I have more than two ingredients. I see them combined. Do they still look the same? Do they keep their physical properties? They did. So a bowl of candy is a mixture. I don't really like Twix, so I could take those out and give them to my friend, right? This Reese's still looks like a Reese's. It didn't lose its properties. All right, our last one is, ooh, this is a tricky one. Our last one is dish soap. Like you would use to wash your dishes, dish soap. Let's think about that. I know that to make dish soap, I have my sink full of water. I add the soap to it. But when I look at the soap in the bottle, that's not what it looks like. So I think some of its properties have changed. When I look at it in the bottle, it is a liquid, right? I don't see all these bubbles. So that tells me some of its properties have changed. The, it seems like the, dish, the soap spreads out evenly in the water. I think it dissolves. So yes, dish water is a solution. Good job, guys. All right, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to practice separating some of these mixtures. So I showed you, I showed you four tools that can be used to separate mixtures and I told you that when we are separating mixtures, we need to think about how the ingredients are different, how their physical properties are different from each other. And that's going to help us understand which tool to use, okay? So the first mixture I have here is rocks and sand. So you can see most of the rocks on the top and then underneath there, I also have sand. Do you see the sand down there? So I have rocks and sand. So we need to think about how are rocks and sand different? They're both solids, right? So I couldn't use a paper filter. Rocks and sand are not magnetic, either one of them, so I couldn't use a magnet. I guess I could use my tweezers and sit here and pick out all the rocks, but that might take all day. So what tool could I use to separate rocks and sand? I know that rocks are bigger than sand. I know that sand is small enough to go through the holes of my sifter, but the rocks are big enough to stay on top. So what do you think? Should we use a sifter? Let's try it out. So I'm going to put my sifter on top of the bowl so I don't have any spills. I'm going to take my mixture. I'll do this so you can see. I'm going to pour it slowly and carefully. I'm going slow so I don't make a mess. Okay, I'm going to kind of Let all that sand go through. And I am left with my rocks on the top. There's my sand. There are my rocks. 
So did my sifter work to separate my mixture of rocks and sand? It did, didn't it? That's because a property that rocks and sand have that is different is their size. Rocks are bigger, sand is smaller, and it's small enough to go through the holes of the sifter. Good job. All right, let's do another one. My next one is a mixture of paper clips and beads. Okay, so you need to be thinking about how paper clips and beads are different. They're different colors, right? So I could use my tweezers and just pick out all the beads. Or I could be, leave the beads and use the tweezers to pick out the paper clips. That seems like it might take forever, especially if I have a big bowl, okay? What about my paper filter? Do I have a liquid and a solid? I don't, I have two solids, so nothing would go through my paper filter. That won't work. Are either of these small enough to go through my sifter, like the sand? They're definitely not, right? What about my magnet? Would my magnet work to separate this mixture? Why, why would my magnet work to separate this mixture? You're exactly right, because I have one ingredient that is magnetic, which is the paper clips, and I have another ingredient that is not magnetic, which is the plastic beads. So let's try it out. Are you ready? I got my magnet right here. Oh, it kind of threw some of the beads, didn't it? Look at that. It picked up all of the paper clips, because paper clips are magnetic and beads are not. So that's the physical property that is different between beads and paper clips is magnetism. So my magnet will work. All right, we have two more that we are going to look at. Our next one is, I have a mixture of sand and water. There's my sand, there's my water. So think, how are sand and water different? What's a property that is different about sand and water? Are either of them magnetic? It would take forever to sit here and use my tweezers to pick out all the pieces of sand. The water and the sand will both go through a sifter. What about the paper filter? You think that'll work? Do I have a solid and a liquid? I do, so, so the paper filter should hold in the solid and let the liquid go through. Do you agree? All right, let's find out. Hopefully we don't have a big mess here. So I have my little paper filter stand and then you always need to make sure you have something under here to catch it because when I pour this through, if it works, the filter, the paper filter will hold in the sand and let the water go through. I'm gonna pour slowly. Oh, there goes the water. Oh, let me slow down. I went too fast. Water's going through. I haven't gotten any sand in there yet. The sand's still at the bottom of the cup. Let's see what happens. Add a little bit more. And now here's my sand's gonna start coming out. Well, hopefully. Look at the bottom. Oh, there we go. There's my sand. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, making a mess. So look at that. The filter is holding in all the sand. Can you see all of the sand right there in my filter? It's holding it up and all the water is going through. Because remember when you have a mixture that is made up of a solid and a liquid, you can use a paper filter to separate it. The liquid goes through, the solid stays in the paper filter. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's try out one more. Holy moly, I don't know how to move this out of the way without making a big old mess. Oops, and then just kind of take it apart. So I fill it everywhere. All right, my last mixture is Chex Mix. Time for a snack, yummy, yummy. So I know I have a mixture because I have two or more ingredients. See, I have these pretzels, I have these little things, I have the light colored squares, the dark colored squares. Ooh, these are my favorite, these rye chips. I wanna pick out, can you see that? Those rye chips, those are my favorite. I wanna pick out all of those, those are my favorite. Okay, they're combined together. They've kept their physical properties. The squares still look like squares. The circles still look like circles. They haven't gotten smaller. They haven't changed size or shape. Nothing has dissolved. Okay, how could I separate this? Are any of my ingredients magnetic? Definitely not, right? That would, might be dangerous to eat if something in here was magnetic. Do I have a solid and a liquid? Definitely don't. All of these are solids. Do I have solids that are different sizes? I do, but are any of them small enough to go through the holes of my sifter? Nope, none of them are. If I poured this on my sifter, they would all stay on top. So what could I do to separate this and pick out all those rye chips? Because I'm getting very hungry. Whoops. And I'm ready for a snack. So what tool that I showed you can separate things that are maybe different colors, that are maybe different sizes, but not small enough to go through a sifter. Maybe they're different textures. I could use my hands. Yep. Or I could use my tweezers, right? Ooh, there's a rye chip. Mmm. Yummy. I love rye chips. You're exactly right. All of these are solids. None of them can go through the holes of a sifter. Nothing is magnetic. So I could use my hands or my tweezers. So remember, we called that manual separation. Very good. All right, you guys did an awesome job talking about mixtures and solutions. When this video is over, you're gonna go into Schoology. You're going to take your short quiz or assessment over mixtures and solutions. Next week, when we do Science Lab, we're gonna be talking about the physical property called solubility. So we're gonna be looking and investigating to see which substances dissolve in water and which ones do not. All right. I hope you guys had fun and I will see you soon. Bye guys.